Sorry to keep y'all waiting. So heck of a celebration in that locker room, as you guys um, can imagine. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our fans. That environment tonight may have been the greatest I've ever been a part of, starting with the Gamecock walk. Um, uh, the 2001 sandstorm, just their, the advantage that they gave us throughout the night. I told the players at the hotel, you know, we haven't gotten off to good starts here at home. And I don't know if it's because we're caught up in 2001 and sandstorm and Gamecock walk, and then we don't get out there and execute like we should. So I told the team at the hotel literally right before we came over here that I understand the crowd's going to be a great advantage for us, but we're not going to win the game because of the crowd. And I may have screwed that up because the noise they created, the false starts they caused, uh, thank you. That was an awesome, awesome, awesome environment, and I'm so happy for all of Gamecock Nation. It's been a long however many, eight years or whatever since we beat those guys. Uh, so I want our fans to celebrate the heck out of um, out of that one. Uh, first of all, tons of respect for A&M and, and Coach Fisher's team. Obviously, the start for them was not ideal, and they never flinched. Quit yawning, David. It's a hell of a win, man. I'm not putting you to sleep yet, but I'm going to be here for a while. Um, that, that was a, a tough start for them. And um, they just kept they, – they never flinched. And quarterback made some plays and, and whatnot. And it was ugly as all get out for us there for a, a lot of the time. But um, just uh, really, really proud of our players and their fight and the individual plays that a lot of our guys made. Uh, Xavier Leggett starting the game and then the kickoff that he covered at the end of the game and went down there and made a tackle. I mean, Tonka Hemingway just got a game ball in there for what he the tackle he made on the blocked extra point, which is embarrassing to get an extra point blocked. Um, but Tonka got that guy on the ground and kept it a two-score game. I mean, if Tonka doesn't tackle him, that thing's going back for two points, and all of a sudden they're throwing for to the end zone to go to overtime. Uh, but just on and on and on with our players and just so proud of their fight. Um, they never flinch. Uh, and it's a, it's a really, really special group of kids in that locker room and really happy for them. It was a uh, just a little over a month ago, I sat in here after the Georgia game and got asked, did I sense any quit in this football team? That looked like that team's quit. So since that day, we've won four straight for the first time since 2013. We just beat uh, Texas, or, uh, who did we beat? Kentucky on the road two weeks ago up in Lexington for the first time since 2012. And we just beat Texas A&M for the first time ever. So no, that there's no quit in this team. We got a bunch of freaking fighters on this team that love each other and play for one another and care about each other. And it showed out there uh, tonight, as ugly as it was at times, we never flinched and they just kept coming back. And we talked about we're a second half team and we get better as the game goes. And we did. Now having said that, we got play and coach a whole lot better because uh, we had plenty of opportunities to really put that game away in a lot of instances and we didn't get it done. And that's disappointing uh, to not be able to convert a fourth and one on that last drive and let them go down the field and get points and have an onside kick and then they recover the onside kick so a lot of bad football and some bad coaching by us we got to be a whole lot better but man um to win this one just so happy for our players and so happy for our fans and and um ready to get back to work tomorrow questions Mark took over in the second half there had the two touchdowns um just I know you guys were trying to get the ball to him, but just why wasn't it working the first half? And then what was the, the talk amongst you and Sad about getting him the ball? A little yeah, um, I mean, that's a good defense. I know you guys pay attention to stats and their rushing yards per game weren't all that great. They got a talented defense. Like 17 will be a first-round draft pick at corner. Uh, the the, the D-line were five-star, number one in the country players for a reason. Uh, I know they were missing a linebacker tonight, but the two linebackers, I mean, they, they, they're really good defensively. I mean, Alabama had a hard time scoring points on them. And, and uh, you know, there were some runs that weren't blocked well. There were some blocks we missed on the perimeter in the run game. There were some plays where – um, you know, maybe we handed it and should have thrown it out on the bubble, or maybe we threw the bubble and should have handed it off. So just a combination of things. And we didn't have a ton of plays in the first half um, either. But the, the thing that I told Sat was just in about midway through the third quarter, just just get the ball to our best players and let them go make plays. And you saw that with Stog, you saw that with Marshawn, you saw that with Juice, you saw that with Van, on and on and on. I mean, we got a lot of really good players, Bell. Um, but we didn't really call much different. It was just we had to block it better and execute it better. Coach, uh, you said after the Kentucky game, maybe in reference to the uh, culture comment, that you looked for different ways uh, to get your team motivated. Did you, or to what extent did you use maybe the 0-8 record against Texas A&M uh, as motivation? And how do you feel they, I don't know, maybe responded to that? Um, we didn't talk about it much. I mean, I brought it up on Tuesday just because our guys knew. 
and I didn't want to like not avoid it, but I I wasn't going to make it a big issue. Excuse me, uh, all week either. Um, we talked about it on Tuesday that that uh, you know it's part of it, but that had nothing to do with this year's game. I mean, we had a bunch of players out there tonight that have never even played Texas A and M. Um, but certainly it was in the back of our guys' minds. And we talked about it at the hotel last night that it was, it's time. It was time to, to win this thing, to win, to win one of these. And uh, our guys believed that and had great confidence coming into the game and, and played, uh, played really, really hard and found a way to win it. Hey, Coach. Hey. <laughs> um, can you just talk a little bit about kind of the emotions that you personally and also kind of the team are, are going through right now? It feels like after Kentucky, you were a lot more emotional and now you're more kind of fired up. So how do these two wins kind of compare for you? I'm fired up because we got a bunch of uh, kids in that locker room that really, 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 really care, and I'm happy for them. Um, I don't I, – maybe I'm fired up. I feel like I took, like, 27 years off my life in that game. I mean, God almighty, guys. Um, I mean, every which way, just when you think it's over, it's not, and then you're holding on, and, and they're throwing balls to the end zone, and then we give up an onside kick, and um, – that was a long, stressful night, but really, really, really uh, happy uh, for sure. And, and just, uh, like I said, proud of these kids. Shane, a stat probably a lot of people will have a look to overlook tonight, but I know you won't, was your punting game. Cool. Your punter kicked Kai Kroger got a game ball in there. Yeah. For 49-yard average, it yep. flipped the field every time. He and did. on top of that, you only gave up 14 yards in return yards for punts tonight. Yeah, he was awesome. He got a game ball as well for that. I mean, it was a – look, we knew going into this game it was going to be a – Four quarter SEC football game. I mean, these guys, these guys, this team's really, really good that we just played, and um, and they're playing all these freshmen. And they've been beat up, and they continue to get better. So I mean, we knew it was going to be a battle, and we talked about it on a Tuesday in our team meeting that you know field position and situational football was going to be really, really key because this is a game where we're there's not going to be a ton of plays in it. You know, they're not trying to go 100 and run – they're not trying to go fast and run 100 plays. So situational football and field position was going to be really, really key. And Kai was awesome tonight, the way that he was able to flip the field position and then the way we were able to uh, cover kicks about against some really, really dangerous uh, returners from Texas A&M. We'll kick off return and, and, uh, and pump return. Shane, you guys obviously jump out to the quick lead. I think it gets to 17-14 right before halftime. I, I mean, I know you guys have been a second-half team, but what's the message right in that moment when they go and score that touchdown, pull it to three? I mean, what, what are you feeling? What did you say to the group? In the locker room at halftime yeah. that, um, you know, we talked right before we took the field and at the hotel that we were, we were a confident team and, and we should be going into this game and that we better go out there and play with an edge to start this football game. Uh, and I told them the exact same thing at halftime. I said that um, – it was uh, that we the same confidence that we had before the game. We should have the same confidence right now that we we uh, uh, expected this. That when adversity hits, we get stronger as a football team. Uh, when things don't go our way, nobody panics. We just get better and just hang in there and, and keep uh, keep fighting. And told them that, and, and told them that you know just we're going to win this thing in the fourth quarter. Just keep getting better as the game goes and, and keep uh, playing physical and keep playing with great effort and, and uh, just keep playing with confidence is the thing that is what we talked about at halftime. You got, you got something, Ben? I just had a quick follow-up. I was going to say, I think you guys scored in 13 seconds against Kentucky. It was 14 this week. Is the goal like 12 <laughs> seconds next week against Missouri? Or? I don't know. I told uh, – it was funny. I mean, Pete said something to me. I guess it was uh, – I guess it was in the team meeting last night. I told him, like, we're going to make a play on special teams and it's going to be the difference in this game tomorrow. And I didn't know it was going to be on the very first play of the game. Just like, um, you know, last week we talked about getting turnovers and they hadn't put the ball on the ground. Kentucky hadn't. And we needed to force a turn. Or we, they, we hadn't forced a fumble all year is what it was. And then we forced it on the first play. So I don't know. Maybe I just need to keep speaking it into existence, Ben, whatever, uh, whatever I want to get done. But no, it was awesome. We, we know not – we're pretty good when we score first. I don't know what the record is, but I think we've lost like one game since I've been here when we score first. Um, I think that's right. So it was critical to get off to a, a great, um, a, a really good start. John. Two things on that last offensive drive. Did, did you think Marshawn may have gotten the first down? Any thought of challenging it and the thought process behind uh, not kicking the field goal and, and going with Bell on that fourth down? Call? Um, yeah, I th upstairs they said that we got a – not a great spot in their opinion. The coaches upstairs uh, said that. Hindsight being 2020, probably 
should have, but I mean, they're, they're, they're usually pretty good when something's close like that, they stop it and, and review it. So with where we were in that game, you know, probably would have been, probably would have been good. And you're talking about not kicking a field goal to go up six. Is that what it was? Yeah, when we got stopped before they went down there. Um, for me, it was, I think, if, well, if we kicked the field goal, we would have been up 12. 12. We would have been up 12. Yeah, to me, it's at that point, I mean, they need two touchdowns. Uh, yeah, so if we go up uh, to make it, if we, I'm sorry, I got too many plays running through my head right now, David. So if we had kicked the field goal, we would have gone up 12. Is that what you said? Yeah. In my mind, we, they got a freshman quarterback in the game. You'd like to just be able to fit in the game right now and, get where, and, and go for it on fourth down. Um, so I went for it there to try and finish the game. And then I'm also thinking, okay, if we don't get it, they've got a true freshman quarterback. They've had a hard time moving the ball against our defense all night. And, uh, you know, if they can go down the field on us and, and get in position to score, then, you know, more power to them. And they basically did. <laughs> so hats off. Shane, you're now 5-0 and with extra time to prepare. All uh, right. See y'all didn't <laughs> jinx me this week with Ben or Ben or whoever asked that on Tuesday. And I guess yeah. <laughs> last year coming off a of bye week, you got a big win, and then you were able to kind of parlay that into a really strong finish. How do you guys take what you guys did tonight and parlay that into these last final five games to finish as strong as you did last year? Yeah, I mean, it's just continuing to, to get better. And, and that was one of the things we talked to the team about, Colin, was we should be confident going into this game because I felt like we got better as a football team uh, during the off week and then this week as well um, and that's the credit you know a testament to how they practice so for us it's just continue to continue to get better we're by far a finished product I mean we just beat a really good Texas A&M football team with 286 yards of of offense and however many turnovers we had uh, tonight but uh, we did some good things, but there's obviously a lot that we can be better at defensively as well and in special teams. Um, so for us, it's just continuing to go right back to work and 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 know that we're 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 on a race to improve and let's just continue to try and get better and better each week. Shane, when you say you and the coaches have to coach better, how much are you talking about the during the week leading up to the game, or are you just uh, specifically talking about decisions made? in the game? Uh, I mean, I just think throughout the week, I mean, continuing to put our guys in position to make plays and, and, and help them in the game as well. And, and, and look, that's a good team. They're going to make plays against you and they're going to get stopped. So, but don't misunderstand what I said, Rick. I mean, I'm not disappointed in our coaching or playing. I mean, we coached our butts off tonight and, and played our butts off tonight and knew it was going to be ugly at times. But, you know, certainly we got to continue to find ways to, to uh, um, um, not give up big plays on defense and, and not turn the ball over on offense and not get field goals blocked or extra points blocked uh, as well. So you know, that's any game. We always got to just be better throughout the week and then on game days as well. Uh, you get the ball back up three with about eight minutes left. What's the kind of the first time all year, all year you've been in that situation? What's the message on the sideline at that point and kind of what, what was your angle on that five-minute touchdown drive that pretty much iced the game? That it was a big-time drive that, you know, if we want to get better as the game goes and we want to take games over in the fourth quarter and continue to, you know, we, want, we pride ourselves on being a really, really physical football team. Well, what more could you want, you know, a drive to go right down the field and, and put the game away and, and uh, running the ball and, and throwing it. So that, that was – Basically, the message, you know, enough's enough. Let's go, let's go get points right here and, and uh, try and put this thing away. Uh, Shane, you mentioned Leggett, and obviously his return to start the game and the tackle at the end of the game. Yeah. Obviously, he's had his ups and downs throughout his USC career, but did you have maybe any hint that this was coming with him? Have, did you seen anything out of him in practice that something like this could come? And just what do you think, you know, just for him as a, you know, as a player to be able to do that? You know, yeah. Um, he works really, really hard in uh, in practice, and and you know he had he's been great for us on special teams, uh, on offense. Uh, you know, people want to talk about the two plays against South Carolina State. We'll talk about the all the great plays he's made and the blocks and things like that that he's done. So he's a guy with all those guys on offense. They just work, and um, you know he had a good week of practice. And can't say that I thought. Uh, he would do what he did tonight, but doesn't surprise me. I mean, we work a lot. We work really, really hard on special teams, and he's a he's a big guy that that um, is hard to bring down. I mean, he's big and he's physical, and he can run well. And you saw that on the kickoff return, and you saw it on the kickoff coverage, uh, and whatnot as well. He's a he's a really good, really good football player, and I'm, I'm happy for his success. 
Hey, Phil. Hey. Uh, you're sitting here five and two and, and likely to be favored your next two games. Who knows, but likely to be favored. How do you think uh, your guys are going to handle kind of being in this position now? I would hope good. I mean, we handled it pretty good coming off the Kentucky win as well. And, um, I mean, that was a – that was a huge win in Lexington two weeks ago, and we obviously had an off week to kind of come back down to earth a little bit and then get ready to go for A&M. But uh, I think they'll handle it great. This is a very, you know, workmanlike group. I think I mentioned to you guys, I think I did, but we always, you know, we track GPS and, you know, uh, player load during practice, just how hard they're working and speeds and things like that. And the Tuesday practice before the Kentucky game was the best it had been all year as far as output, meaning how hard they're working in practice at every position. Well, the Tuesday practice this week was even more, meaning they're, they put even more into the Tuesday practice than they did against Kentucky, which was pretty hard to do as well. So uh, I would imagine this week would be um, the same. It's a hungry group that's eager to just get back out there and, and get better. And, and it's a really, really close team, Phil. I mean, they, they support each other. They, they uh, play for each other. And, and that showed out there tonight. And they're genuinely happy for, for each other. There's, um, you know, it's an unselfish bunch that, that loves to compete. We'll let Coach go and get some players in here. Yep. Thank you, guys. Enjoy y'all's weekend. Appreciate it. Let's find that trophy wherever it is and get it in Columbia, too. So. Governor McMaster, if you can call uh, the, the, the Texas Greg, Greg Abbott, is that his name? We can, somebody can call Governor Abbott and find out where our, that trophy is. Let's get it to Columbia, please. Thank you.